Sir, I have three questions for you. Uh, does free will exist? If yes, then some actions and its consequences cannot be explained through horoscope. But astrologers seem to explain everything. And if uh, there is no free will, then why do we get fruits of our good or bad actions? For then we are just puppets in nature's hands. Also to question about free will is important because in Bhagavad Gita, uh, Sri Krishna is saying that the three gunas of nature make everyone work, but foolish people think that he is the doer. Okay, thank you Vivek for asking this question really nicely. Very With very good Vivek. Um, first of all, you're asking if we have free will. My answer here is not to worry about what we have or what we don't have. <clears throat> what we have today, we don't have tomorrow. And what we don't have today, we will have tomorrow. What we have is always changing. So it's not that important. Don't think about what we have, whether we have free will or not. Think about what we are. If you can understand what you are, then you'll automatically know what you have and what you don't have. But if you don't understand what you are, then what you have and don't have won't make sense. So try to think about, we have to try to think about what we are, not what we have. So what am I? Am, am I a hand? If I'm a hand, then who's using the hand? Who's seeing it? Am I my eyes? If I'm eyes, then who's moving the eyes around and using them and seeing through them? Am I my thoughts? Then who's thinking them and making plans with them? Am I my feelings and my desires? Then who's feeling and who's desiring? Am I anything? Whatever it is that I say that I am, then how is it that I know that I'm that thing? So in this way, we can actually understand what we are. We are consciousness. That's what we are. Knowing that, you can know what you have and what you don't have, if you have free will or not. What is consciousness? Consciousness is the perceiver and motivator. Perception happens because of consciousness, and action happens because of consciousness. When there's no consciousness, things don't do anything. Even if your consciousness is lessened by sleeping, for example, you don't cook. People who are in a coma don't do anything. People who are dead don't do anything. Bricks don't do anything. The prime motivation of Brahman, or consciousness, is karma, a thirst for what? For ananda, for joy, for something beautiful, for something that brings pleasure and happiness. Why? Because it's consciousness. It's the ability to experience. So what is its inherent motivation? To experience. So you see, now you can answer the question whether or not there's free will. Because you know that you're consciousness, and consciousness has motivation. That motivation is the essence of will. So yes, we don't have free will, but we are free will. But now the word free... The free part of the free will has to be examined because as you note in your second part of your question, if we have free will, then how can astrology predict anything? So free and free will can mean two things. It can just illustrate the very nature of will, is that it's the causeless beginning, the initiator of an action, the causeless cause of setting a chain of events in motion. So it's free, it doesn't have any, it's not the effect of any other cause. In that sense, it's free just called free will by its nature. But the misunderstanding is to say that free must mean limitless and without boundary. Why don't we have limitless ability to initiate actions? Why don't, why don't we have limitless free will? Because we have to deal with the causes and effects that we've already set in motion. If you push a rock down a hill, you have that will to push the rock down the hill. But once you've done that, you don't have the will to reverse it. 
So your will, the use of your will to motivate certain actions, the actions which you take, begin a chain of causes and effects which have momentum. Like a train going down the track at full speed, you can predict with absolute certainty that it's not going to stop in 10 seconds. Why? Is it that the driver has no free will? That's why the train can't stop in 10 seconds? No, the driver has will. The driver can decide to stop the train. But it's still not going to stop in 10 seconds. Even if he slams on the brake, it's going to take 30 seconds for that train to stop. Why? Because he previously decided to put it at full speed and make that thing go fast. And now it has its momentum from that decision. So similarly, when every single thing that we do in this world generates momentum for us, every single action that we do creates a result. That's why we're doing the action, to get the result. So every single action produces the result and the, the momentum from the action to the result and then the repercussion of the result is our fate or our destiny or our karma. So it can feel like you're hopeless, hopelessly under the rock that you pushed down the hill, hopelessly hurtling down the train tracks when you want to stop in 10 seconds all of a sudden. But it's not because somebody in some other universe, some god or somebody threw a lightning bolt at you and decided that you should suffer or you should enjoy. These are the natural results of your free will. So, fate and free will are one and the same thing. Fate is simply the result of the way you have used your will. Okay? So what astrology is predicting and showing, it's the astrological birth chart is a map of the clues that the universe has given to us about the type of momentum that is bearing down on us in this lifetime as a result of our previous lifetimes. So you can predict with certainty in some cases that certain things will happen and, or that the person will be a certain way, experience certain things and go about life in a certain way. And there are certain things that you can't predict also because some of the things are not, don't have that much momentum. If you're going quite slow down the, down the road, you can stop on a dime. So for some things that don't have that much momentum, they don't show up too much in, your, in the chart, the birth chart. Okay, so with, when there's not a lot of momentum involved, then your will has a lot more freedom. So be careful about your actions is the advice of karma yoga. Be careful about your actions. Do your actions in such a way that your momentum slows down, that you're less involved in selfish activities, bringing results to you all the time then you'll get out from the momentum of your activities and be able to exercise your willpower and make wise decisions and direct yourself to a truly beneficial goal. Now the third and final part of your question, you mentioned Bhagavad Gita, the third chapter, 37th verse. Prakriti kriyamanani gunai karmani sarvasha ahankara vimudhatman kartaham niti manyate and then you say, this verse seems to say that we don't have any will, that we're, we're not ex exerting will, we're just under the influence of Prakriti's gunas, the qualities of nature. We're helpless. And if we think otherwise, we're a fool, vimuda. So let me just tell you first that you cannot cherry pick quotes from the Shastra and expect to get knowledge. If you just understand a quote in isolation from the rest of the quotes, you won't get anything special. From the Vedas. Shastram Yonita Tattu Samanvaya. Wisdom, knowledge about Brahman will come from Shastra, the sacred text, the Vedas. Tattu, but you have to approach that sacred text with Samanvaya, with syncretic hermeneutic, with syncretic holistic interpretation not singling out certain parts, but taking everything in a whole context. Then you will understand the meaning of the Veda. But at least, the very least, you can begin the practice of at least considering the verse 26. If you're quoting verse 30, uh, 27, then at least take a look at 26 and 28. See the immediate context. The 26th text of the third chapter where Krishna says, Buddhi pedam na janayet. Don't tell regular people to try to act like saints. Because 
The reason is in this text that you quoted, 27, because they're very, very, very addicted to their work. They think, they are fools, they are vimuta, and they think that this work that they're doing is their very self. In actuality, this work is just the momentum of their karma, forcing them in, by habit into doing these patterns through the gunas of prakriti. But they're identified with the work as if it was their very soul. So if you try to pull them out of that, you're just going to harm them. They cannot go cold turkey. You have to teach them how to joshi it, do their activities in such a way that it's not so selfish. Start doing their activities dedicated to the benefit of others. Don't try to get them to stop activities. That's the message of this section of the third chapter. And then the very next verse in 28, he says, wise people don't act in that way. See, in that text, he says, tattva, tattva vittu maha baho guna karma vipagayo. Guna guneshu vartanta iti matva nasajate. They don't get involved in the, they don't feel involved in the actions which are just the turning of the wheel of momentum. Because they know the difference between real action and habituals, habits, things that are happening under the force of momentum. So this verse 27 is being used wildly out of context if it's used to support the idea that there's no free will. For in the Brahma Sutra itself, I do believe, Bhadrayan Vyas gives the argument that if there's no such thing as will, then the Shastras themselves are useless. Because who is being told to improve themselves? They have no ability to improve themselves. So he says this is a ridiculous interpretation of Shastra to say that, it, that there's no will. And furthermore, as you pointed out, in your question, if the soul has no agency, no will, then it's not responsible for its actions. So the whole concept of karma becomes ruse. So definitely, as I explained, consciousness not only has will and uses will, but is will. Consciousness is the ability to perceive and the will to perceive. So will is what we are. But that doesn't mean that we're entirely free because as we will to do actions, we are responsible for the repercussions of those actions. And what astrology shows us is the nature of the repercussions that are coming to bear on us in this lifetime. I hope that answers your question, Vivek. And thank you for giving me the chance to give an answer on this wonderful question. Haribo.